सो फॉर वट आई वॉज डीलिंग वॉज ए वेरी लो करेंट एंड लो करेंट मीन्स स्पेस चार्ज इफेक्ट्स आर नॉट देयर बट दैट इज नॉट द केस सपोज यू आर हैविंग लार्ज करेंट्स आई वुड लाइक टू आस्क ए क्वेश्चन कैन दिस ऑल दिस कैलकुलेशन विच आई हैव रन सो फार विल दे बी वैलिड और वी शुड डू मच मोर और समथिंग बेटर and uh, that is shown here that if the current is high which is the requirement of uh, many experiments for example irradiation of samples or the ads which i talked about accelerator driven system and which i will talk later they are higher the current better it is and um, there even hundreds of milliampere current is uh, required for doing the job and so if the current is high then this uh, single particle trajectory calculations which we were talking about so far is not valid and uh, that will let us see why it is not there let us take that uh, uh, it's a 1 milliampere current now normally uh, in some of these uh, uh, future experiments we will be needing hundreds of milliamperes so i just take a, as an example that uh, we need let's say 1 milliampere current now 1 milliampere current means what we see we talked about particle trajectory calculation now 1 ampere is nothing but a flow of 1 coulomb charge per second that is what it 1 ampere now charge of electron or proton is uh, is 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 coulomb so you will see that uh, flow of 1 coulomb per second means flow of uh, points 6 7 into 10 power 19 protons per second now 1 milliampere is uh, 6.7 into 10 power 15 protons per second see now uh, if so many particles are together now is no more a single particle now is a bunch now is they are all together is they are flowing in one second so many particles so they are behaving like a bunch now they are all together and you know the similar particles the similar charge proton proton they always repel because of vispation their coulomb repulsive forces are there so is you cannot neglect now the space charge effects and they will contribute and then they are not linear they are non linear in nature and therefore there uh, these forces have to be taken into account so in front of these uh, space charge forces will be on focusing it will not it will not allow it to focus and the shape and orientation of beam also will be disturbed not only that there is another phenomena called uh, beam halo that also will be formed you will see new phenomena and uh, i'll discuss in uh, later and therefore now beam optics if you want to study the the performance of the system then the beam dynamics of the that system has to be done uh, with space forces taken into account you cannot simply do the uh, single particle calculations whatever i was doing earlier that is no more valid and uh, beam halo means see now if i am starting such a big number of particles put in in a bunch which is shown here this is a bunch which looks like almost like circular and when it is passing through the various elements beam devices then it will no more at the exit it will no more be a circular beam but it will have some particles will misbehave and because of non linear nature of this so there will be some particles which will be not in the center but they will be slightly away and this is quite substantial for example in some cases if this many particles are not focused they will heating the accelerator components and they will make it uh, uh, that the whole components will be activated and you can also see because of some higher order uh, effects there are some particles which are grouping here they are getting collected here 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 apart from this uniformly distributed halo there are some particles and these particles are very dangerous because they at high energies where for example in ads we need about 1 gv beam these particles of 1 gv and they are quite substantial so what you will see that if you plot this 
you will see that most of the particles are here but there are particles uh, like these particles here and uh, so this is almost like uh, 70 80 percent is here but there are few percent particles which are uh, around you can see that this is not going uh, the background this is like a background this is called hello and background is not zero and on an hour on the, on the top of this there are some places where these particles are also getting grouped and they are very dangerous in the case of high energy accelerators and they have to be taken care of the sources of these particles is uh, beam mismatch and uh, uh, so that is a see uh, there are thousands of components in big accelerators so at each each uh, uh, joint or each point these particular this uh, matching of the beam parameters have to be done and these forces could be non non linear in nature and therefore it has to be and uh, be mismatch beam evolves in final equilibrium state with accompanying growth of halos and emittances so i am introducing now another parameter so far i introduced the parameter which is halo and the other one is emittance now see what we were calling earlier uh, as the theta this is a divergence now that same thing in a layman's language is now represented by the emittance here which i will be explaining here and uh, these emittance growth or the halo formation they are the uh, they are the phenomenon responsible for uh, non functioning of uh, some of the particles and uh, that you can see that uh, i will be explaining here and this has been uh, very nicely explained in this paper now uh, what what is the meaning of emittance hello you have seen that there are there is a central portion where most of the beam are there but few percent of beam is uh, is a part of the, that hello which is forming which is surrounding that uh, main beam and of course with some pockets now other parameter is emittance which uh, which uh, i have talked about in the last transparency is uh, emittance emittance is nothing but an emittance is uh, talked about only in the case of large uh, beams because uh, if the beam is very strong then uh, you can uh, your calculation with for the single particle trajectories is good enough while if the particles are very large in number millions or millions of particles then you have to track the emittance you have to track the uh, envelope so there is a uh, there is a uh, uh, theorem called Leibniz theorem and that says that uh, for the conservative forces if a beam is subjected to the conservative forces then the this theorem says that emittance is a conserved quantity and uh, the emittance is nothing but the area occupied by the beam in a position and momentum or we call it p p x plane of the space or we call it phase space uh, sometimes so uh, this is so you can if you see the beam will look like this there is a central portion where most of the beam is there but there are many particles so when you say emittance then you have to also keep in mind how much particle see i mentioned it earlier that beam almost will go like this there is a central portion and there is a very little and this is the background and this is basic and this is not zero it is so this is basically is uh, nothing but uh, the hello we do to yellow and these are some stray particles which are forming together i am just considering uh, what is the distribution of the particle that means uh, whether i am taking this actually most of the beam is here only but uh, then all the beam is not here we are considering 80 percent beams or we are considering 90 percent or 95 or 99 you can see here that uh, uh, that will matter that will define the uh, the emittance value which is nothing but the area of the total ellipse so out of that ellipse uh, how much particle how what percentage of particle you are considering to calculate the emittance so emittance will always have some error 
depending upon what particle distribution you have taken into account. So as I mentioned that area of the ellipse, ellipse is, is equal to pi times the uh, x maximum and px maximum. P is uh, momentum. So in, uh, in one plane, it is uh, x, x prime because part momentum is proportional to x prime. So you can say x prime. And you can see here, the same thing you can write that the that area does not change. So you can see that here it is x is this direction and uh, what, px is this one. Similarly, you can say this is equivalent to x is in this direction and x prime is this direction. So this is called phases, phases, space ellipse. So this area of this ellipse is basically emittance. Now if you take, uh, if you take uh, this, suppose this was at the injection, this was the shape of the ellipse at the entry. That means where there was a very little diverge. Suppose I take it par parallel beam sort of thing. So this x prime will be very small. x may be large, but x prime will be very large. So the, the ellipse will look like this. And at the end, you see the divergence has increased. The size of size has come down because we want that, let's say, the particle is crossing at the x-axis. Let's say particle is crossing like this. So here x is very small, so x has come down. But the this uh, traject, this uh, divergence is very large. So this ellipse has changed to this. So we have to follow now the ellipse. And the number of particles as by Leibniz theorem will remain same unless you make uh, uh, complete mismatching of. So, so you can see here that the horizontal ellipse at A here, this ellipse, has become a vertical ellipse. So what we were earlier talking about single particle now has changed to the ellipse and the ellipse orientation is changed. It may, it was let's say in the beginning, it will be in between it may be like this or at the end it may be like this or somewhere it may be even like this. That depends. So we have to take that into, so we have to now follow the ellipse and uh, uh, not the single particle. Now uh, in the case of high current particles, now we have to see the beam emittance and its growth. Uh, earlier we were talking about the divergence. We were thinking that theta should not increase. Here we should, uh, this is the parameter, that we have to see that emittance growth is minimized. And there are three kinds of uh, emittances which are defined, which are there here. And uh, normalized emittance, which is, uh, see, uh, suppose I am injecting a 100 keV beam in the accelerator. And it, in one case, I am accelerating uh, to 100 MBV. Other case, I am accelerating to, let's say, 1 GV. Now, whether, is there any parameter? which I should be able to compare and judge whether the, my system is proper or not. And uh, that should not change. Uh, that, that, is, that should be normalized. So that is called normalized emittance. Normalized emittance takes care of uh, the energy increase. So this is the measured value of uh, emittance at low energy we have started with. Beta is equal to V by C and gamma is equal to one upon root 1 minus beta square. So normalized emittance is given by this. So if the uh, so you can see that this will always be, let's say this is positive, then this emittance with the energy increase should come down. And that happens actually. Another thing is RMF emittance. And as I mentioned that the growth of the emittance should be as small as possible if the accelerator is properly designed. You can see here, uh, that if the, uh, the these particles are throughout here, so if you just take the ellipse which encloses about 70-80% particles, the emittance will be different from 90% or even 100%. 100% emittance means you are taking, let's say, this is the emittance you are taking, so uh, you are taking full beam throughout. 
but sometimes that may not be necessary. It may be necessary to have only uh, uh, these many particles which will have let's say 90 percent or 80 percent or something like this. So that uh, parameter uh, how much we have to take on is, uh, is defined as the sigma that is the full width of the arc. So this is sigma. So one sigma will, uh, will have about 69 point something, 69 percent particles. And uh, if you take two sigma that means somewhere here then it will have almost like 80, 85 percent or something like this. So that depends upon what kind of distribution you have used, whether it is a Gaussian distribution or is a normal distribution or Poisson distribution or what kind of distribution you are having. So uh, this is somewhere you can see that that while coating the emittance, you have to uh, you have to take into account that what kind of uh, Per, uh, what percentage of particles you have to take on, we have taken. So uh, actually if you have not taken, uh, if you have taken all the particles emittance will be much bigger because you are taking uh, area at much less. So if you are taking only 80 percent particle or 68 uh, percent particle, then the emittance will be small. And that is reflected here. F is the percentage of particles, fraction of the particle which have been used for calculating the, uh, which have been taken uh, uh, for calculation of the emittance. So, so once you know this, then you actually know what is the emittance. And here uh, sigma, which is used is a RMS width of the beam. Beta is one of the uh, twist parameter. There are three parameters which are given there. So uh, if you see that uh, if I summarize this lecture, then uh, we studied the, uh, we talked about the focusing properties of angel lens, electrostatic and magnetic lenses, mainly quadrupole lenses. And we saw that uh, in the, in the case of electrostatic quadrupole lens, the focusing is mass independent. Therefore, they are better as compared to the as compared to the magnetic quadrupoles because all the particles with different masses but similar charge state will be focused at one place. Now, to demonstrate the point of uh, uh, of the uh, accelerating tube which is a main component of any DC accelerator. Beam dynamics of 2 MeV tandem accelerator was discussed and through that we uh, demonstrated, we talked about, we have shown it that uh, varying gradient, potential gradient is more efficient uh, and spherical and average, uh, chromatic aberration affect the shape and the size of the beam. and. Uh, High currents, of course, the space charge effects contribute both shape, size and uh, other parameters and therefore the beam dynamics has to be done completely and that can be totally different and therefore it has to be uh, done with the full space charge effects. If the current is large, then in addition to other parameters, even beam halos will be formed and this can lead to beam losses and uh, one of the disadvantage of that is or one of the serious problem is that this can lead to activation of beam line components. For example, if suppose out of 100 milliampere, 2 milliampere beam or 1 milliampere beam is hitting any target at 1 GV, you will see that so much of activity will be produced that you will not be able to come close to that system for several weeks actually because it will take um, weeks together to decay down to the, uh, the level where the you can go inside. Therefore the beam dynamics should be done with the large number of particles, actual number of particles. Uh, you cannot do uh, uh, for a 1 milliampere or 5 milliampere beam single particle beam dynamics studies. So these are some of the things which we have discussed. Thank you.